Hello guys, my name is Andrei. In this video, I'll explain how you could connect from FastAPI to MongoDB um, and how you can establish connection, how you could uh, uh, send a request to MongoDB, for example, to create a new record in the collection and how you could fetch the data. Um, I'm developing uh, my own open source solution, Sparrow, for uh, data extraction from different documents and uh, also, right now, implementing uh, ChatGPT plugin, uh, which is called Receipt Assistant, and uh, we're using MongoDB uh, as a storage solution to store um, receipts data that was extracted and processed by ChatGPT. So this data would be available in the next sessions when user is coming back to ChatGPT dialog and uh, he could uh, fetch uh, the data that which was stored before and ask additional questions. Okay, so let's uh, jump to my screen. So this is the GitHub repo of uh, Sparrow and all the code that I'll be showing you today, you can find in this repo and this will be mainly a Sparrow data uh, folder where the code is located that I'm explaining in, in this video. Right, and uh, first of all, uh, to get started, I'll also post the link below the video uh, to this uh, very nice tutorial, which is, uh, ex explains um, step by step uh, how you could um, connect uh, from FastAPI to MongoDB. Um, you could follow along and uh, it's great. And what I'll do, I'll just from my own experience, will show uh, how I'm using this uh, uh, concepts uh, inside my own FastAPI application. All right, and first of all, uh, when you want to connect from FastAPI to MongoDB, uh, obviously you need to set up a MongoDB cluster. Uh, you could run either uh, on-premise uh, community server and connect to that, or uh, you could also use uh, MongoDB Atlas. This is the cloud solution, and uh, this is a free instance available, uh, which you can, uh, can use for the testing and, and uh, some maybe uh, small uh, production applications if you want. And you can always upgrade to the paid uh, subscription with more uh, dedicated resources and so on. Yeah, so in order to connect to uh, MongoDB from FastAPI, you need to create environment variable which is called uh, MongoDB URL and you need to provide your um, <clears throat> MongoDB cluster specific uh, connection details like a username, password, and uh, URL and uh, database um, that you are trying to connect. And you can set uh, those parameters in the Python code if you want, but it is recommended to uh, set uh, connection details as environment uh, variable because this uh, uh, makes uh, security better uh, in case that you forget to um, uh, remove uh, the details from the code and commit somewhere and someone else could see that and connect. So it's better to keep connection details private and set them through the environment variable. This is the, the point. Okay, so now let's uh, switch to my develop environment, PyCharm, and uh, from FastAPI I'm using uh, uh, standard library uh, provided by MongoDB called uh, Motor. And this is a sync library. This means it doesn't block um, uh, fast API um, uh, thread and uh, it allows multiple requests from different users to be processed at the same time. Okay. And what we see here, I'm using, the uh, important thing is that I'm using um, uh, fast API events for the startup and shutdown. This means when FastAPI <coughs> is started, then this event is being executed and I check if MongoDB environment variable is set, then I'm um, uh, establishing connection uh, through, through, through using those details that are taken from the environment variable and um, getting the instance of the database that I want to work with. Then <clears throat> I'm creating um, indexes, uh, creating unique index one, unique index two in this case, and creating time to leave index. And uh, the, this one specific about MongoDB is that uh, if the database object like index 
is recreated, then it would be not not recreated again. So you can <coughs> this means you can safely use the code that um, initializing the index on the application startup. And it's if the object already exists, then this creation will be skipped. So that's um, very convenient in this case because it helps to build uh, <coughs> simpler code. Okay, on shutdown, we also close the client and uh, yeah, that's uh, kind of self-explanatory. And <coughs> this uh, place where uh, we get data from the OCR engine, uh, we get extracted data from the document and we uh, want to store it in a database. And this is the place where we call store data. And we're using a wait here because um, uh, the connection to the database and all the operations with database are established and executed using the uh, MongoDB async library motor. So store data is available in data utils over here. So this is the place where we, we push uh, uh, data into the MongoDB collection. So first of all, we construct a receipt model and we're using Pydantic and we validate the data. This helps to uh, ensure that the data that we will push to the database collection is valid. And if you check receipt model, so over here, we see that um, there's a receipt keys being defined content and content is defined like a array of arrays and this nested group of arrays, each element, each array, uh, each nested array contains a single string. So uh, this is the definition. And through, through this class, uh, with the help of the Pydantic, we do a validation of the data before we push it to a database. Then we have some configuration over here. And like we provide default uh, schema example and so on. Uh, and this in MongoDB, uh, you th there is uh, uh, pi object ID should be stored. So we based on documentation we create this this additional uh, additional field which will be automatically auto populated when uh, data will be uh, pushed to the database. Uh, you can read more about it in the tutorial that I mentioned in the beginning of the video and um, URL to the tutorial is av available uh, below the video. Okay, so uh, validation is successful in this case, then we get uh, dictionary data from the model because um, motor library, it doesn't work directly with Pydantic, it cannot uh, push uh, data to, to database from, uh, from Pydantic structure, but rather we get dictionary data and we encrypt the content um, so that uh, because receipt is um, uh, user uh, sensitive data and we don't want um, anyone having access to the database or uh, in some incident, let's say someone would get the data from the database, they would not get any sensitive data because data is encrypted and it's not um, readable. And when we get data back to the server, to fast API server, we decrypt it <coughs> back and return to the user. So <coughs> data which is stored on database, it's uh, encrypted. <coughs> so we encrypt the data, then we set uh, uh, value for the created ads and we're using time to leave index for this specific collection. Uh, it's being set for 15 minutes and by default, if the user is not doing anything with this record, then it's automatically being removed by MongoDB. This is also very useful functionality because some <coughs> on UI, user is uploading the file, file is being processed and then the idea is that user will use this file in chat GPT dialogue. And then it, once the file is used in chat GPT, then it's uh, immediately removed. Otherwise, if user is not doing any, anything with the file, then it will be out removed after 15 minutes. That's uh, very convenient. Okay, and then we do insert one, we insert the record in the collection. Uh, and the data is uh, is being fetched uh, using find one, for example, and as I said, uh, once we fetch the data of the document, then we instant immediately delete this record, and yeah, in this case, we return data back. Okay. 
So thanks for watching and uh, the idea of this video was uh, uh, to give you quick hints, especially useful for those who just start with uh, uh, fast API and uh, MongoDB to give you understanding how you could uh, connect uh, from fast API to MongoDB, how you could uh, validate data with Pydantic and uh, how you could uh, push data to a database, how you can fetch data and more importantly uh, you should see the proper structure where uh, like methods like uh, events like uh, for the startup and shutdown being used to initialize connection to the MongoDB and close the connection on application stop. So thanks for watching and uh, see you next time. Bye.